Hi, welcome. In this session, I want to talk about something very practical, which is if you have access to a Bloomberg terminal, and most of us don't, it's an incredibly expensive data instrument, but if you do, how can you use it to get basic data for corporate finance and valuation? Now, I have to tell you upfront that Bloomberg is a trader's instrument. It's designed for traders, so it does some things very well and some things not so well. And I'd like to talk about both the good and the bad in Bloomberg. So I'm going to start with the page. This is actually my launching page, WEI, which is, so if I type in WEI, no, so where, where you get the cursor, you get the indices as of right now. So in live, if they're, they're live, if the markets are open, they're not open right now, you'll see these numbers blipping and changing. But let's say my objective is to find out information about a company. Let's pick a company. Let's suppose the company I want to look at is Microsoft. So I type in Microsoft. I get a bunch of hits. You're saying, which one do I look at? I want Microsoft equity. I want information about the company, so I'm looking for equities. You're saying there are three. Which one should I use? I'm going to go to the local listing. I know Microsoft is a U.S. company, so I'm going to go to Microsoft U.S. equity you'll get an entry page. This is the page that at the top will tell you what happened to the stock price today, and it gives you all the information about the company. This, on this page, you can pull up past financials, you can pull up the, who owns the stock, you can pull up risk measures, trading volume. It is a platform for all the data. Almost all of the data here is public data. There is very little private information. You could pretty much get the same data elsewhere, but it would be a lot more work. Let's suppose, for instance, I want to find out who owns Microsoft shares. If I click on the ownership summary, I'll get a listing, at least in a very general level, what percentage of stocks are held by institutions, by insiders, across geographies, and who owns the stock in the company. Very useful information, right? But let's say I want to zero in on who the largest shareholders are. If I type in HDS, I'll get a listing of the largest shareholders in the company right now. Now these again come from SEC filings, so that there's nothing proprietary about the information, but you're getting a measure of who the largest shareholders in the company are. In fact, if you look at the listings, it'll give you the name of the person of the of the entity that owns the shares, the source of data that Bloomberg used to get the data, and how many shares are owned. So if you look at this listing, the Vanguard Group is the largest single shareholder in Microsoft. This is incidentally the first page. If you keep clicking through, you'll see the next 17, the next 17, and so on. Let's say that instead of looking at holders, I want to look at the risk in Microsoft, and I want to zero in on beta. Now, you might not like betas, you might like betas, but here's an incredibly neat feature. If I type in beta, I get not just a number for Microsoft, but the regression that Bloomberg used to get the beta. Incidentally, these reflect Bloomberg's default choices. And what are they? Bloomberg is very parochial about the way it estimates betas. You ask for the beta of a U.S. stock, it does it against the S&P 500, a German stock against the DAX. We'll come back and look at what you could do if you don't like that index and you want to change it. It uses two years of weekly returns. And here's the regression. And if you go to my website, I'll take you, I take you through this page on what this regression tells you. But let's say you do not like the defaults. For instance, let's assume instead of running it against the S&P 500, you wanted to run it against a global index. So I'm going to type in MSCI. MSCI is a, there's an MSCI world index. I could replace the S&P 500. And if I hit the return, voila, I get a new beta against a global index. Neat, right? So you can take any stock and rerun the regression against a different index. You can change weekly to monthly, quarterly, or annual if you want to, or daily. I would never use daily, and if you use yearly, you better have a lot of data. So usually the choice are weekly or monthly. So let's say I want to go monthly. And let's assume instead of looking at just the last two years, I wouldn't look at the last five years. You're saying, what do I do then? You can change the starting and the ending points for the regression to make it five years of data. In fact, all the highlighted air, uh, boxes that you see are things you can change if you want to. So in addition, looking up the beta, you can get the rest of the beta regression. 
saying, what about financial data? What can I get that? Let me type in what the entry point for that is. It's called FA. You type in FA, you'll get a listing of financial, the, the summary for the company. In fact, if you look at the top, it will give you the income statement, the balance sheet, the cash flows, the ratios, etc. So Bloomberg is an incredibly useful resource if you want to get some, you know, everything about a company quickly in one place. You think that's great for U.S. companies. What if it's an emerging market company? Let's pick an obscure company. Let's pick Vinamilk. It's a Vietnamese company. You think, would Bloomberg have the data? Well, let's see. There it is, v VNM, Vietnamese equity. Let's see what it has for Vinamilk. So an obscure company, right? It's a Vietnamese company. Let me type in HDS. Magic, right? Here are the largest shareholders in Vinamilk. Of course, the sources might be less reliable, but they have the largest shareholders. You think, what about beta? Let me type in beta. What you will get is a regression. I told you it's very parochial. It's run against a Vietnamese index. You have a page that looks just like the beta page for Disney. And as with, I'm sorry, with the beta page for Microsoft. And just as with Microsoft, you can change the index. You can change weekly to monthly. You can change the time period. Now, incidentally, Bloomberg in recent years has started trying to become a little too helpful. It actually allows you to look up the cost of capital for a company the equity risk premium for a company. On those dimensions, I'll be quite honest, I don't trust the numbers that Bloomberg comes up with. Not because the people behind the numbers are not smart people with access to data, but because it's incredibly opaque. You have no idea what goes on behind the number. And I'm very wary about using numbers where I'm not sure what the inputs are that are driving the number. I use Bloomberg to get raw data. I think it's my job in corporate finance and valuation to estimate things like equity risk premiums and costs of capital. Incidentally, if you want macro data, Bloomberg has macro data as well. In fact, I get sovereign CDS spreads right of Bloomberg. If you remember, sovereign CDS spreads are default spreads set by the market. In fact, all I need for that is a set of symbols, SOVR, I, I click that in, and there you have sovereign CDS spreads for different markets. So use Bloomberg to get data if you have access to Bloomberg. And if you don't, don't give up hope. The data that's on Bloomberg is available elsewhere for the most part. And you should be able to get that data as well. I hope you found the session useful. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care, bye-bye.